Welcome back. I always try to have a well-crafted introduction to a film and sometimes the thought and the emotion behind a film and especially the opportunity to screen it beforehand makes that a little bit more difficult to easily encapsulate. This film is called The Cleaners and it is a phrase that is used for what we might call uh, the back door of social media and of the internet of course. We all think of Facebook and Google and other social media platforms as a place where we can post our photos of our family and a particularly delicious recipe but the stakes are inestimably higher than that when it comes to the fact that there are bad people in the world and those bad people want to use social media and those powerful platforms we will come back to the word platform in their own nefarious ways. It's a heavy film, but I feel like it is a film that we all really, really need to see and consider. I'm fortunate to be here with the filmmakers, Moritz Riesewick and Hans. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Nice I blanked you. on your last name, Hans. Block. Block. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Nice Thank you so you. much for being here. Thank you. And um, Thank you. after investing some estimable estimable bit of thought into that introduction. I'm going to sit back a little bit for a second <laughs> and I'm going to let you guys tell the story of the film and please tell the story of, of your inspiration to make this important film. I mean both of us have been um, very fascinated but on the other end also skeptical about the social media because it becomes like a superpower of information, a superpower of of, of uh, content is uploaded. It's not just holiday pictures, as you said before, or, or cute cat videos. Also, human rights uh, violations are documented in real time, or political conflicts are held. Uh, we know that stuff. So it becomes more and more important for us. Um, and then the question came up, um, uh, what uh, is curated on these platforms? Because there was a case, 2013, uh, a video of a shite abuse went online. Uh, and we were shocked because it was uh, shared 16,000 times uh, within seconds. Uh, and then we asked ourselves, is there someone who's taking care on that platforms? Is there someone who is filtering or controlling that platforms? And that was kind of the starting point of our research. Because it's actually weird that um, if you go to certain areas of the internet, you find all, all kinds of stuff, right? And on these platforms, most of the time it looks like we are a completely healthy world, uh, there is nothing, nothing which can disturb us and so on and so on. I mean it has slightly uh, changed a bit but um, still these platforms curate a world for us which has not so much to do with the world um, out there and the people who curate this world they have a, m a massive power over not only our private um, perception of the world, but they can also silence groups of the society, they can influence wars, they can like interfere in political conflicts of all kinds. Um, so this is really a huge responsibility uh, these people have. And so we were really curious who are these people who do this job. And then we found out that there is a, a huge hidden industry on the Philippines where like thousands of young Filipino workers sitting in front of a screen every day, eight to ten hours, and uh, monitor all the content of the world. So, And the Philippines have developed to the, like the, what we say, the content moderator capital of the world. There are other spots in the world, but they are really literally um, are the, the tens of thousands of, of workers working in this field. And um, they are not hired by the major uh, social media companies themselves, <laughs> but by completely unknown um, third-party outsourcing companies. And what they do is they even hide this work by um, giving the, the job another name like uh, to pretend this this work has nothing to do with deletion or with censorship and they also uh, use code words we found out that there is a code word uh, honey badger it's called this is this tiny little animal <laughs> um, walking around and uh, this animal has a very good nose we don't know yet uh, why they chose this this animal but um, it's, it's used to hide um, the the fact that th these workers these young Filipinos work directly for Facebook for Twitter for YouTube and they're not allowed to talk at all about what they do there. And, and that's a, a, a 
an essential part of the film. B before we talk about that, let's take a quick look at the clip so we get a f look and feel at the cleaners. Many stories, but I, I kind of think of, of these two themes. One of these people who ha had the, the guts to speak to you, whether they're uh, no longer employed by the third parties or however we uh, collapse that down, and, and a very personal journey for you all to, to ask of them to do that. Mm. Talk about that part of the experience. Mm. Yeah, we have to consider that uh, this work has massive effects, massive impact on their, um, on their health, on their, their mental health. And this is something which in the Philippines is not so much considered an issue. You have to imagine if there are, there are still people dying by hunger, um, by poverty every day. Um, so it's like if you claim you have a mental ill problem, um, in such uh, circumstances, it's like claiming you have a cold in the middle of uh, victims of a natural catastrophe, right. something like this. So it's really hard to talk about the problems they have, and they have really low psychological support there. It's right. like group sessions with all the, all the other employees and these uh, so-called psychologists are hired by the companies themselves. So you can even imagine how, uh, how courageous you, you need to be to, to speak up in, in, in this uh, moment. Of course, and there's kind of a checking the box feel, I think, that that has. You guys, we only have about a minute and a half left, and I'm really sad about that <laughs> because I could talk all day about this. The final thing that I want you to speak to before we have to go off air is censorship, and I think specifically of the situation in Turkey. Mm. Erdogan yeah. and, and this control that is perhaps the most chilling of all. Mm. I mean there is a censorship going on because the, the governments uh, put pressure on the social media to delete a certain kind of uh, content uh, every day and this uh, happens more and more and uh, there's one episode in our film which plays in, the, in Turkey and then we found out that it's not allowed to for example criticize uh, Erdogan uh, uh, on social media and so uh, uh, the government of Turkey uh, uh, make deals with Facebook that they delete those kinds of things those contents which is has an immense effect on political uh, space and in a lot of cases their gut feeling has to decide because the guidelines they get are not um, good enough and, and and there are so many gray areas in there that they really have to decide on their own and, and you can imagine um, how much power uh, gets to their hands if, if, if they have to de indeed. decide like instinctively indeed right? uh, fellas uh, we have to go I'm so sorry Thank you for being here. The last thing is, please tell us a website where people can find out more information. <laughs> In 10 <laughs> seconds. It, you don't have we don't have website. a... No website. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I'm yeah, going to close <laughs> out, you guys. Watch the cleaners. Thank you for watching In the Can. It's live television. See ya.